We all need somewhere to call home. But when your home is a tree, what do you do if it gets chopped down? The first thing I have to do is always make sure nothing's moved in. Took a uh, brown tree snake to a show once. <laughs> The hollow homes that we make uh, cater for things like gliders, all of the gliding species, through to the, all of the parrot species are hollow nesters, all of the owls. Um, there are three species locally of tree snakes that rely on hollows, microbats, antichinus, uh, melamies, uh, tree frogs, uh, over 300 species Australia-wide. It began as a hobby, um, but uh, the interest grew into hollow dependent species and their reliance on, on hollow trees. And that's what, that's what created, I guess, what is a research tool. Um, and we just got hooked on it. These are hollows that have been um, resourced from um, things like road widening, um, developments, and rather than them go through the chipper, um, we bring them home, uh, we cut the spouts off them and we reuse them in the nest boxes. Um, and this is... This is from a tree that'd be, you know, 400 years old at least, probably older. And you can see here, um, this is polishing, and this is uh, like a resin. It's, it's um, from sugar gliders or squirrel gliders or maybe another possum, I'm not sure. But something's been rubbing its scent glands against the hole and climbing the hole. So you could imagine in the life of this hole forming, this would have been used by, you know, hundreds if not thousands of different um, animals and several species. The natural environment has been heavily affected by ourselves because of the road widening and development of all kinds and, and safety issues around people's homes. And there's a lot of wildlife that relies on the holes in those old trees. And in a way, it's tense for refugees using nesting boxes, but in the short term, it, it is effective. But we make probably a couple of hundred a week. I think we've uh, already gone through a couple of thousand this year. We're going to have a look inside this box to see if uh, we've got anything in there. The box is designed for squirrel gliders. Um, and this time of day, of course, they'll be, should be in there fast asleep. If they're in there. the species that use them and it's a great approach to the to the public we use infrared cameras to film inside the nesting boxes many people wouldn't know what was inside a hollow tree never mind a nesting box in their garden and when we can show them what's in there by by the method that we film them in about four or five years ago there was a scientific paper done on on our work and that has helped us a lot with with credibility um, people that I knew years ago would say, well, you know, what are you doing now? And I'd, I'd tell them, they go, what? so you're on the dole, eh? Like, no, I'm not on the dole. This is, it's a different kind of business. I don't think the best nest boxes have been made yet. Ours will do the job in the meantime. Retirement would, was never going to happen. I'll be doing this uh, uh, until I can't do anything. Yeah.